Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, you're about to listen to a conversation that Congressman Lewis T. McFadden had on the House floor back in 1993. Now, oh, look at that. It's mint condition. And they're singing about some eyes that are pretty and brown. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the McFadden talk. You're going to get a chance to hear the words. You know, normally I play the um, audio in the background. I let it read it. You know, Dave, you know, but Dave ain't going to talk right now. The young lady from and she they didn't add no information to this. So I'm going to let you guys know this is AIB radio. County Assembly podcast radio show. Okay, so I'm giving them their little props because guess what? All they did was read what he said on the House floor. Ladies and gentlemen, everything that I've been telling you, again, I've been telling it to you. I've never heard this speech before, but you're going to see that he agrees. And he was back there in 1933 when this was going on. He explains to you about the Federal Emergency Relief Act that is separate. That's the March 12, 1933 Act that is separate. He tells you what the banks did that he was able to prove because what? He was a congressman at the time. Oh, did you know he died? Yeah, McFadden died. Guess how he died? I, I, I hear he died from eating shrimp. I guess he choked on a shrimp or something. <laughs> we know that's a lie, but it worked back then because the people didn't know how powerful this speech was that he gave. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not worried about my life for giving you guys the same information here today and proving to you and using the law to prove to you what's going on and that what they did back then was unconstitutional. I, I don't have a problem with that. The God I serve, I trust. I'm not worried about them quieting me up. The way they quiet me up is they take me away so I can't do the videos and educate you. That's not my problem. I'm not concerned about that. I don't mind them taking me away. Calgon, please take me away. Okay, I don't mind. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I'm not doing this for their reasons. I'm doing this for my reasons. I'm not doing this for your reasons. You see... You guys keep talking about, and then education and knowledge will become abundant. Well, let's guess what? None of you guys have an excuse. Because the information is out there. You're just not looking for it. Now, somebody, the lawyer who called me talked about how in his speech he talked about providing remedy. And they were getting ready to introduce a bill and stuff. That, well, that's what they were telling me. But it wasn't so much getting ready to introduce a bill. It was so much that they were, he was actually bringing up all of the crimes that have been committed and he was bringing charges as a member of Congress against these individuals, which he completely had the right to do. You see, Congress can issue warrants, subpoenas, and so forth. Congress can hold court. You didn't know that's what the congressional hearings are all about? <laughs> They're called congressional hearings. Those are administrative proceedings, people. Those are what's called legislative courts. Congress can hold court, just like the administrative branch of government can hold court. They're called administrative hearings. One is legislative, one is administrative, the others are judicial. Three different branches of government. Judicial hearings are called not judicial hearings because see the judges are not allowed to hold a hearing. Judges are not allowed to be judge. They don't get to judge the matter. That's not the way the Constitution was written. The jury is the judge. The jury has always been the judge. That's why you have a right to a trial by jury. Well, they say, well, you don't have a right to a trial by jury in a, um, a, um, a misdemeanor case. That's not it. The law never said that only in felony cases. Go back and look at the Sixth Amendment. It says the accused shall have the right. It does not say in all felony cases. Well, no, wait, hold on. I could be wrong. Because y'all know sometimes I just speak out the side of your neck. Okay, I've already downloaded Jerry Kane, but let's say I see skies are blue. Okay, 
let's make sure of what the Sixth Amendment talk about because we're going to go to the Sixth Amendment because Sixth Amendment and Fifth Amendment, they might almost go hand in hand, but they don't go hand in hand. In all criminal prosecutions, well, they say a misdemeanor is not a criminal. Yes, it is. The accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy trial. It does not say in all felony cases, it says all criminal prosecutions. Speedy and public trial by an impartial jury, not by an impartial judge. Notice this doesn't say anything about a judge. The judge is the referee only. This was the United States. That's why it had to be by a member of the person's peers. Why? In the state and district, wherein the crime shall have been committed which district shall have been previously ascertained by law not by statute okay to be informed of the nature and the cause of the accusation to be confronted with witnesses against him and have compulsory being able to force somebody to obtain witnesses in his favor and to have the assistance of counsel in his defense not assistance of attorney it never said attorney it never meant attorney Okay, so there's your Sixth Amendment. That's the issue. So, ladies and gentlemen, my boy Louis Armstrong in the background. Okay, oh, and you know, it was revised in 1992. They had to change that. Sorry, that was some other research I was doing. Where are we? Am I here? 1933. I'm thinking I'm looking for the microphone because when I turn this on, the microphone's gonna be up there. So I'm looking up here for the microphone, going, where the microphone at? All right. Louis Armstrong. What a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. Hello, mommy. Hello, my baby. Hello, my back time gal. Anyway, apologize for that. Just playing on the, the WB. All right, we can go to the next song. Then we're going to pause. Uh oh. I said we're going to pause. If it ain't one thing, Richard. It's another Dimplesfield. He'll be coming on next. Richard, we're going to be with you in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to pay a listen to Mr. Lewis McFadden's reading before Congress. The title of Crimes and Criminals. Now, again, this is Mr. McFadden, Congressman McFadden. Mr. Speaker, I rise to a question of constitutional privilege, whereas I charge... Eugene Meyer, Roy A. Young, and he lists a whole name of people, Federal Reserve agents, jointly and severally with violations of the Constitution and laws of the United States, and I, whereas I charge them with having taken the funds from the U.S. Treasury, which were not appropriated by the Congress of the United States, and I charge them with having unlawfully taken over $80 billion from the United States government, and I charge them with having unlawfully taken, oh, excuse me, in the year 1928, the said unlawful taking consisting of the unlawful creation of claims against the United States Treasury to the extent of over $80 billion in the year 1928. And I charge him with similar thefts committed in 1929, 1930, 1931, 1932, and 1933, and the years previous to 1928, amounting to billions of dollars and, whereas I charge them jointly and severally, with having unlawfully creating, created claims against the United States Treasury by unlawfully placing U.S. government credit in specific amounts to the credit of foreign governments and foreign central banks of issue, private interests and commercial and private banks of the U.S. and foreign countries and branches of foreign banks doing business in the U.S. to the extent of billions of dollars and with having made unlawful contracts in the name of the United States government and the U.S. Treasury, and with having made false entries on books of account, and whereas I charge them jointly and severally, having taken Fed notes, the U.S. Treasury, and sued Fed notes, and with having put Fed notes into circulation without, obe without obeying the mandatory provision of the Fed Act, which requires the Fed Board to fix an interest rate on all issues of Fed notes supplied to the Fed banks, Interest resulting therefrom to be paid by the Fed banks to the government of the U.S. for the use of the Fed notes, and I charge them of having defrauded the U.S. government 
and the people of U.S. of billions of dollars by the commission of this crime, and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with having purchased U.S. government securities, U.S. government credit unlawfully taken, and with having sold the said U.S. government securities back to the people of the U.S. for gold or gold values, and with having again purchased U.S. government securities with U.S. government credit unlawfully taken, and with having again sold the said U.S. government security for gold or gold values, and I charge them with having defrauded the U.S. government and the people of the U.S. by this rotary process, and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with having unlawfully negotiated U.S. government securities upon the government liability was extinguished as collateral security for Fed notes and having substituted securities for gold, which was being held as collateral security for Fed notes, and with having, by the process, defrauded the U.S. government and the people of the United States, and I charged them with the theft of all the gold and currency they obtained by this process, and whereas I charged them jointly and severally with having unlawfully issued Fed currency on false worthless and fictitious acceptances and other circulating evidence of debt, and with having made unlawful advances of Fed currency, and with having unlawfully permitted renewals of acceptances and renewals of other circulating evidences of debt, and with having permitted acceptance bankers and discount dealer corporations and other private bankers to violate the banking laws of the U.S., and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with having conspired to have the evidences of the debt to the extent of one billion artificially created at the end of February 1933 and early in March 1933, and for an interjection here, that is when Hitler rose to power. And with having made an unlawful issue and advances of Fed currency on the security of said artificial created evidences of debt for a sinister purpose and with having assisted in the execution of said Oh, am I still here? Yeah, you're still going. Go ahead, honey. Okay. Whereas I charge them jointly and severally. currency obligations of the Fed banks to the people of the United States and with having conspired to obtain a release for the Fed board and the Fed banks from their contractual liability to redeem all Fed currency in gold or lawful money at the Fed bank Fed currency and with having conspired to have the debt and losses of the Fed Board and the Fed Banks unlawfully transferred to the government and to the people of the United States. And whereas I charge them jointly and severally with having unlawfully substituted Fed currency and other irredeemable paper currency for gold in the hands of the people after the decision to repudiate the Fed currency and national currency was made known to them and with thus having obtained money under false pretenses. And as I charge them jointly and severally with having bought about a repudiation of the U.S. in order to that the gold value of the said currency might be given to private interests, foreign governments, foreign central banks of issues, and the Bank of International Settlements, and the people of the U.S. to be left without gold or lawful money and with no currency other than a paper currency irredeemable in gold. And I charge them with having done this for the benefit of private interests foreign governments, foreign central banks of issue, and the Bank of International Settlements. And whereas I charge them jointly and severally with conniving with the edge law banks and other edge law institutions, accepting banks and discount corporations, foreign central bank of issue, foreign commercial banks, foreign corporations, and foreign individuals with funds unlawfully taken from the U.S. Treasury. And I charge them with new financing for foreigners 
at the expense of the U.S. Treasury to the extent of billions of dollars with having unlawfully permitted made, and made possible the bringing into the United States of an immense quantities of foreign securities who traded in foreign countries for export to the U.S. and with having unlawfully permitted the said foreign securities to be imported into the U.S. instead of gold, <clears throat> excuse me, which was unlawfully which was lawfully due to the U.S. on trade balances and otherwise, and was having lawfully permitted and facilitated the sale of foreign securities in the U.S., and whereas I charged them jointly and severally, having unlawfully exported U.S. coins and currency for a sinister purpose, and with having deprived the people of the U.S. of their lawful medium of exchange, and I charged them with having arbitrarily and unlawfully reduced the amount of money and currency in circulation in the U.S. to the, lo the lowest rate per capita in the history of the government, so that the great mass of the people have been left without a sufficient medium of exchange. And I charge them with the concealment and evasion in refusing to make known the amount of U.S. money in coins and paper currency exported and the amount remaining in the U.S as a result of which the refusal, the Congress of the U.S. is unable to ascertain what the U.S. coins and issues of currency are at the present time and what amount of U.S. currency is now held abroad. And whereas I charge them jointly and severally in the having arbitrarily and unlawfully raised and lowered the rates of money and with having arbitrarily increased and diminished the volume of currency in circulation for the benefit of private interests, the expense of the government and the people of the U.S. and with having unlawful salaries and property values, both real and personal, in the U.S. by unlawful operations in the open discount market and by resale and repurchase agreements unsanctioned by law and whereas I charge them joint... Before I let her continue, and I'm sorry about the hiccups and the hip-hops and the break up. I need you to understand. In a moment, she's going to talk about how Congress was supposed to give the people a remedy. Now, one of those remedies was a medium of exchange. That is your argument whenever the government tells you that you owe a debt or someone tells you you owe a debt. In what medium of exchange are you requiring this debt to be paid back yet? The treasury has not provided you a medium of exchange. Legal tender is not a medium of exchange. So where is my medium of exchange at law? Is what people should be asking. I'm gonna let her continue. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why there is no debt. Do you understand? They've not provided you a medium of exchange. But you need to understand this. I've been shouting this for years, but they knew it all the way back in 1933. I didn't live back in 1933. I just went off of logic, people, because if it didn't make sense and it didn't make sense, then it didn't make logic. And if it doesn't make logic, it don't make sense. Hold on. And severally, with having brought about the declining prices on the Stock Exchange and other exchanges in October 1929 by unlawful manipulation of money rates and the volume of U.S. money and currency in circulation, by theft of funds from the U.S. Treasury, by gambling and acceptances of U.S. government securities, by services rendered speculators and politicians and by unlawful sale of U.S. gold reserves abroad, and whereas the unconstitutional inflation law embedded in the so-called Farm Relief Act, by which the Fed banks are given permission to buy U.S. government securities to the extent of $3 billion and to drew forth currency from the People's Treasury to the extent of $3 billion, is likely to result in connivance on the part of the set accused with others in the purchase of, by the Fed of the U.S. government securities to the extent of $3 billion with the U.S. government's own credit unlawfully taken 
it being obvious that the Fed do not intend to pay anything of value to the U.S. government for the said U.S. government securities, no provision in, for payment in gold or lawful money appearing in the so-called farm relief bill, and the U.S. government will thus be placed in a position of conferring a gift of $3 billion in the U.S. government securities on the, in the Fed to enable them to pay more on their bad debts to foreign governments, foreign central banks of issue, private interests, and private and commercial banks, both foreign and domestic, and the Bank of International Settlements. And whereas the U.S. government will thus go into debt to the extent of $3 billion and will then have an additional claim of $3 billion in currency unlawfully created against it, and whereas no private interest should be permitted to buy U.S. government securities with the government's own credit unlawfully taken, and whereas currency should be issued for the benefit of said private interests or any interest on U.S. government securities so acquired, and whereas it be publicly stated and not denied that the inflation amendment of the Farm Relief Act is a matter of benefit which was secured by Ramsay MacDonald, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, upon the occasion of his latest visit to the U.S. Treasury, and whereas there is grave danger that the accused will employ the provision of creating U.S. government securities to the extent of $3 billion and $3 million in currency to be usable thereupon for the benefit of themselves and their foreign principles, and that they will convert the currency so obtained to the uses of Great Britain by secret arrangements with the Bank of England, of which they are the agents, and for which they maintain an account and perform services at the expense of the U.S. Treasury, and that they will likewise confer benefits upon the Bank of International Settlements, for which they maintain an account and perform services at the expense of the U.S. Treasury, and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with having concealed the insolvency of the Fed and, will have, and with having failed to report the insolvency of the Fed to the Congress and with having conspired to have the said insolvent institutions continue in operation and with having permitted the said insolvent institutions to receive U.S. government funds and other deposits, and with having permitted them to exercise control over the gold reserves of the U.S., and with having permitted them to transfer upward of $100 billion of their debt and losses to the general public and to the government of the U.S., and with having permitted foreign debts of the Fed to be paid with the property, the savings, the wages, and the salaries of the people of the U.S., and with the farms and the homes of the American people, and whereas I charge them with forcing the bad debts of the Fed upon the general public covertly and dishonestly, and with taking the general wealth and savings of the people of the U.S. under false pretenses to pay the debts of the Fed to foreigners, and whereas I charge them jointly <clears throat> excuse me, and severally with violations of the Fed Act and other laws, with maladministration, with the evasions of the Fed law and other laws, and with having unlawfully failed to report violations of law on the part of the Fed banks, which, if known, would have caused the Fed banks to lose their charters. And whereas I charge them jointly and severally with failure to protect and maintain the gold reserves and the stock and gold coinage of the U.S. and having sold the gold reserves of the U.S. to foreign governments, foreign central banks of issue, foreign commercial and private banks, and other foreign institutions and individuals at a profit to themselves. And I charge them with having sold gold reserves of the U.S. so that between 1924 and 1928, the U.S. gained no gold on net account but suffered a decline in its percentage of central gold reserves from the 45.9% in 1924 to 37.5% in 1928, notwithstanding the fact that the U.S. had a favorable balance of trade throughout that period, and whereas I charged them jointly and severally with having conspired to concentrate the U.S. government securities and, and thus national debt of the U.S. in the hands of foreigners and international money lenders, and with having conspired to transfer to foreigners and international money lenders title to and control of financial resources of the U.S and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with having fictitiously paid installments on the national debt with government credit unlawfully taken, and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with the loss of the U.S. government funds entrusted to their care 
and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with having destroyed independent banks in the U.S. and with having thereby caused losses amounting to billions of dollars to the said banks and to the general public of the U.S., and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with a failure to furnish true reports of the business operations and the true conditions of the Fed to the Congress and to the people, and having furnished false and misleading reports to the Congress of the U.S., and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with having published false and misleading propaganda intended to deceive the American people and to cause the U.S. to lose its independence, and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with unlawfully allowing Great Britain to share in the profits of the Fed at the expense of the government and the people of the U.S., and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with having entered into secret agreements and illegal transactions with Montague Norman, governor of the Bank of England, and whereas I charge them jointly and severally with swindling the U.S. Treasury and the people of the United States in pretending to have received payment from Great Britain of the amount due on the British where were debt to the U.S. of December of 1932, whereas I charged them jointly and severally with having conspired with their foreign principals and others to defraud the U.S. government and to prevent the people of the U.S. from receiving payment of the war debt due to the U.S. from foreign nations, and whereas I charged them jointly and severally with having robbed the U.S. government and the people of the U.S. by the theft and sale of the gold reserves of the U.S. and other unlawful transacting created a deficit in the U.S. Treasury, which has necessitated to a large extent the destruction of our national defense and the reduction of the U.S. Army and U.S. Navy and other branches of the national defense. And whereas I charge them jointly and severally of having reduced the U.S. from a first-class power to one that is dependent and with having reduced the U.S. from a rich and powerful nation to one that is internationally poor. And whereas I charge them jointly and severally with the crime of having treasonable conspired and acted against the peace and security of the United States and with having treasonable conspired to destroy constitutional government in the United States. Resolved that the Committee on the Judiciary is authorized and directed as a whole or by subcommittee to investigate the official conduct of the Fed agents to determine whether, in the opinion of the said committee, they have been guilty of any high crime or misdemeanor which, in the contemplation of the Constitution, requires the interposition of the constitutional powers of the House. Such committee shall report its finding to the House together with such resolution or resolutions of impeachment or other recommendations as it seems proper. For the purpose of this resolution, the committee is authorized to sit and act during the present Congress as at, times, at such times and places to the District of Columbia or elsewhere, whether or not the House is in sitting, has recessed, or has <coughs> adjourned to hold such clerical stenographic, stenographic or other assistance to recommend uh, such witnesses and the production of such books, papers, and documents, to say, take such testimony, to have such printing and binding done, and to make such expend expenditures as it deems necessary. After some discussion and upon the motion of Mr. Burns, the resolution in charge was referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about how long. That wasn't long. Some of you may have thought it was long, but he told you everything you need to know. Now, please understand that in 1922, 1923, 1924, what they were referring to as the Roaring Twenties was permitted by the banks. The banks allowed that. They allowed money to flow freely, creating money without the authority from the United States technically the authority from the Congress. They had the authority from the leaders of the United States, Woodrow Wilson and others, but they didn't have the authority from the Constitution and or law. So what did they do? They allowed that money to flow freely, lending money to everybody, banks, homes, mortgages, everything. Everybody got money. Remember, everything was backed by gold back then. Then what the banks did is they had them sign those loans, you know, the same type of loans they have you guys sign today. And then you didn't read the fine print and the people, everything was going so good. 
2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, everything was going so good. Everybody was buying money, the dot-com boom, everybody forgotten about it, the Spanish influenza. And so because everybody forgotten about it and everything was going so well and there was a market bubble. Bubble, blub, 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 blub. So because there was a market bubble, 2006, 2007, 2008, they created a crisis, 2007, 2008. When they created that crisis, they demanded that their creditors, I mean, their borrowers, their debtors pay, but they didn't allow them to pay with a check or money order or credit card. They demanded they only wanted gold because that's what the contract was. Remember, all currency was backed in gold. So everybody was running to the bank to pay their debt and go. But wait a minute, that didn't happen. Yes, it did. You see, what they did is they didn't come demanding their money until after the depression that they caused. The people still, their money was still in the bank, even though gold, the value of it had lost a little bit, the people still money was, monies was still in the bank and still backed by gold. Now the banks tell them you better pay or we're going to foreclose on you. Everybody rushes to the bank to withdraw their money and all of a sudden uh -uh. y'all ain't getting no more money from our banks. Yeah, we declaring a, a national holiday. We pagans. We just gonna make it a holiday. So we gonna make it a banking holiday. We can give it a special name. We're gonna call it a banking holiday. Now the people couldn't go and get that gold. Now the banks had already made an agreement with the United States. The United States says, no, we ain't agreeing to that. Y'all not gonna sit up here and, and blackmail us. We do not negotiate with terrorists, is what they say it. The bank said, y'all ain't gotta negotiate with us. It's all right. No, that's all right. We just, we, we collected on our debt. Same as we were doing on your people, we doing it on y'all. We are collecting on our debt, so pay up. United States, like, man, if we pay them up, that's all the gold we have. We won't have an economy after that. Nobody will trade with us after that because we won't have anything to back up. So what are we going to do? So they made arrangements. That's what he's talking about, ladies and gentlemen. That's what McFadden is talking about. Hold on. I, know, folks, but that was I didn't do that. I should have put Congressman Lewis T. McFadden. Nobody cares about him. Uh uh. Let's go. Hey. You know what? James Trafficant. We're gonna we're gonna talk about him in a minute. Um, I don't want the excerpts. I want his death. Uh, <laughs> somebody brought up the Sony Bono, and those of you you're too young to know who Sonny Bono was. Sonny and Cher, I got you, babe. Okay. Um, no, well, we, we're not going to find it this way, but we are going to go to the first one. Come on up here. John Trafficant. Let's take a look at John Tra Trafficant for a minute and traffic can't traffic can traffic. Don't traffic won't. It this ain't is a we are changed at Oregon. I just found out someone that I. Would you find out? What'd you find out? No, has passed away. His name was James A. Trafficant. He died at the age of 73. And six months ago, this is what he told me. I got to be careful. It's like a lot of friends say, they've already destroyed you. They've they destroyed you? Taking and away your name. Be careful you don't get too much in the public eye again because they'll kill you. Now, as of right 
this is YouTube. This is not me, and it's not um, a signal issue. This is YouTube right now, ladies and gentlemen. So it's a headache. Yeah, we don't know a lot of the details of exactly what happened to James. We do know that on Tuesday he was driving a tractor, and according to his aide, he got. Wait a minute. We are changed. Wait. See, I didn't know about John Tropicant's death. Had a heart attack, crashed the tractor, causing it to flip with him inside of it. He was rushed to the hospital where he passed away today. September he had a heart attack on his tractor. As of right the now, tractor the tractor flipped on top of him. Mourning the death of James. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm laughing not because Trafficant is dead, but because Trafficant gets a bribery conviction. Pay attention in 2002. Now, do you understand the speech he gave in 1993 about the bankruptcy? It was because of that that we had the A for V, 1998, 1999. 2000, where they balanced the budget, and right after they balanced the budget, 2002, he dies? Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. He talked about how he was being careful. Who knew that he would be in a tractor, the tractor would flip? Anybody else been in a tractor where the tractor flipped and fell on top of him? Well, they said he had a, a, a heart attack. Uh-huh. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, that that sounds about right. Seventy three years old. Who wouldn't believe that? Yeah. That's that's right. And they have not released any details about his death. And I wish to respect those wishes and not to spread any conspiracy theories, rumors, or assumptions online like other people are right now. But in this video, I want to pay tribute to really and that's. You're getting on my nerves breaking up like this because this ain't, we ain't going to play that. We, we ain't going to play that. Look, see, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I say this is a YouTube thing and this is on purpose because you see this right here, this is the amount of the video that remains in the catch. So there should be no stoppage. It should not be recirculating. This right here, do you see this line? This is the part of the video that hasn't been catched yet. So this much of the video has been saved already on my computer system as far as in the catch with the internet provider. But pay attention. Okay. This is YouTube doing this. Oh, well. I'm not going to worry about it, y'all. Not going to worry about it. I have not seen this right here. Uh, this is Traffic Hat. Eventually, I probably will watch that. I don't care about the Jews, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. You see, I did John Traffic Hat, and the first video comes up Jewish, and everything else is Jewish except for this one. I, it doesn't, doesn't make no sense. Now, let's do this. Mr. Latourette, uh, for your information, you have 13 and a half. I'm interested in this. Half minutes remaining. Mr. Heffley has six. Mr. Berman. We're going to pause it for just a second. So y'all hold. Ladies and gentlemen, I was able to pull up um, the John Traffic Act speech, the actual speech. Now, what's happening is this individual says that he's going to read the precise speech from John Traffic Act. Let me tell you why you got to be careful of what you listen to, of what people claim to be fact. So pay attention. Let's let's make him large and in person. Now he's not going to play John Trafficant's speech. He's going to read it. So this is from Representative James Trafficant Jr. of Ohio when he addressed the House of Representatives March. I said John. I apologize, James. He begins, Mr. Speaker, we are here now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in world history the U.S. government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who say it is a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. It is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved 
by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9th. Now, you hear this. He says it's an established fact that the United States government has been dissolved as a result of the Emergency Banking Bankruptcy Act or Banking Act of March 9th, 1933. Let me let him let me let him say it again. By the Emergency Banking Act. Hold on. Because he said it's a fact. It is an established fact. Hold on. It is an established fact. What is it again? It is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9th, 1933. 48 now, stat. One, wait, hold on. Public law 89. Hold on. Hold on, son. Ho hold on. Mm -mm. No, you don't. Mm -mm. Hold on. Y'all, he says it's an established fact. Now, I'm so glad that he's been listening to videos, y'all. But, uh-uh, hold on. You're supposed to be telling everybody what he actually said in that speech. Let's find out what he actually said in his rebuttal speech. Y'all want to hear? So as you can. Gentleman from California. Mr. Speaker, for purposes of debate only, I yield five minutes to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Trafficant. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized for five minutes without objection. We are here now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are... Uh-uh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is definitely YouTube because I just played this. I just played the speech. So y'all hold on a second. Ladies and gentlemen, YouTube ain't controlling nothing. I got Internet Download Manager. I don't need YouTube. It took me only a couple of seconds to download it. And now let's go to the download. Open, 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 open. Sesame, get out of here, keep it. Yeah, I just downloaded the Jerry Kane videos. Now, come on now. Oh, that's right. It's going to get rid of my if it ain't one thing, it's another. Oh, Lordy V. What am I going to do? I guess I'm going to have to open it a different way because it's taking so long. Let's do open and folder. We're going to open it with um, a different program. No, we're going to open it with the same program. There's another way for me to do it. Come on now. Hold on, y'all. All right, it opened up. Hold on. Gentleman from California. Mr. Speaker, for purposes of debate only, I yield five minutes to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Trafficant. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized for five minutes. I don't know where the video is, y'all. We are here now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are Hold on, y'all. I had to open it up in a different player. Remember, this is all about understanding what was going on at the time. So let's bring up the volume. Mr. Tan, gentleman from California. Mr. Speaker, for purposes of debate only, I yield five minutes to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Trafficant. Now, the point is the previous person that we listened to said that it was a fact that the government of the United States was dissolved in 1933, March 9th. Then he spoke about stat 48 stat this, blah, blah, blah. Let's find out what the fact is. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized for five minutes without objection. We are here now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt 
entity in world history, the U.S. government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some that say it's a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. I'm going to support the rule. Wait, where is the, it is a fact. I'm not sure yet if I will support this budget. But I will get there somehow because I believe and I've seen the coming of the praise and of the glory of the Lord and the blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to turn off my speech recognition. One second. That's what happens when I get boisterous. It wants to get boisterous with me. One second. Okay, speak recognition is not a problem no more. And John Trafficant never said anything about it is a fact. <laughs> oh God, okay. I said speech recognition and when I said that it came on. So that's what I'm laughing at. Uh, and I didn't know, uh, watch speech recognition. See, it didn't come on when I said it then. So, it, you know, it, it's um, amazing how sometimes it wants to work correctly and then other times it doesn't. Ladies and gentlemen, he never said that. There are a lot of people doing videos and they may have good intentions. And then there are those doing videos who have no good intentions at all, who put misinformation, disinformation out there on purpose to have you guys going out there saying things that you ain't got no business saying, repeating things that you ain't got no business repeating because you need to look like a fool. And all those sovereign citizens telling people they must be sovereign. Well, see, ladies and gentlemen, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, the one thing that I've learned throughout my entire life, especially is the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel constantly speaks about the sovereign Lord Jehovah. Watch this. S-O-V-E-R-E-I-G-N-L-O-R-D. You know what? Then wasn't I do a, doing a simple search? What do you mean only a simple search? I was only doing a simple search. See, it tells me it don't want to do my simple search. It says only a simple search. Oh, I see what it's saying. It's saying that I can't put a sentence in there when I don't put all of these other simple sentences in there. That don't make no sense. Yeah, that don't make no sense. So I don't know where the the simple search thing comes from because I know I'm just doing a simple search. Let's do this again. Huh? That don't make no sense, people. It says only simple searches are allowed in the free version and I'm doing just a simple search. Give me one second. Okay, we can do both with uh, the same stone. I'm going to show that to you in a minute, but please understand McFadden the McFadden Act, okay, the Federal Reserve System was chief sponsor of the McFadden Act, which limited, and so let's go here, because I'm interested in this, people, and I'm, if the McFadden Act is an actual act, I want to know about the McFadden Act. Hey, McFadden, doesn't he look like the type of person who just won't let, you give him a bone, and he just won't let it go? That doesn't look like the type of person, once he got started on something, there was nobody going to stop him from doing what he was doing? Look at that. He was a Republican member of the United States House Representative from Pennsylvania, serving from 1915 to 1935. A banker by trade, he was an opponent to the Federal Reserve System and was the chief sponsor of the 1927 McFadden Act. Um, let's see what the McFadden Act is. The United States federal law named after Lewis Thomas McFadden, member of the United States House and chairman of the United States House Committee on Banking. Uh-oh, and currency enacted in 1927 for recommendations by a former, anyway, people, please understand something. 
I was going to say when I listened to his speech that he could only do so if he was a member of a committee. As a member of a committee, and he was the chairman of the committee, he brought charges against the bankers. And then he swallowed the shrimp. <laughs> doggy he swallowed a shrimp and he died that's the story well i'm not interested in his earlier life i'm not interested in his political career i'm interested in his death he was in new york city visiting his wife and son in late september 1936 when he was taken ill at his hotel and died of coronary thrombosis what they said he died from shrimp is a formation of a blood clot inside a blood vessel of the heart. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I now see, now I know. They said shrimp, I, it didn't sound right. That's why I was laughing, because people eat shrimp all the time. You don't see nobody dying from no eating no shrimp. Come on, Eddie Murphy, tell them that nobody died from no eating no shrimp. All right, this blood clot, restricted blood flow within the heart, it is associated with the narrowing of a blood vessel subsequent to clotting. The condition is considered as a type of Wait, hold on. Um, I got, I got, I'm a conspiracy theorist. As um, George Bush would say, JW, JW, Jehovah's Witnesses, JW. Anyway, <sighs> let's open a new tab. Okay. Thereafter, in the hospital of a ruptured. In the hospital for ruptured and the crippled. Uh, okay, in Manhattan. He was interned in East Canton Cemetery in Canton, Pennsylvania. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, right. He died of a blood clot. <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, do you know if somebody gave you a shot in your arm and just added air? It will be the exact same thing, exact same diagnosis by those exact same doctors of that exact same time who had not the exact same equipment that we have in this exact same day. So no, I don't believe that. I don't believe that right after he gives a speech on this in 1933, that he dies in 1936. I don't believe it at all. Just like and we need to find out what happened after that speech, ladies and gentlemen. And see, he had the right, okay? See, and he also introduced a resolution bringing conspiracy charges against the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve. The impeachment resolution was defeated by a vote of, whoa, 361 to 8. <laughs> Again, they were not going to let this man sit up here and uproot everything that they've been doing. It was seen as a big vote of confidence for President Hoover from the House. According to Time Magazine, Fadden was denounced and condemned by all Republicans for his contemptible gesture. The Central Press Associated reported that he was virtually read out of his party, had his committee's posts taken away from him and ostracized by Republicans and called crazy. Yeah, he must have been crazy. David Reed was a Republican of Pennsylvania, say it, we intended to act on all political purposes as though McFadden had died. Mm -hmm. And then what did they do to him? He had died. He introduced the House Resolution Number 158 which included articles of impeachment for the Secretary of the Treasury and the two Assistant Secretaries of the Treasury, the Board of Government for the Reserves and the Officers and the directed, Directors of the 12 Regional Banks. Okay, 1934, he made several anti-Semitic comments from the floor of the House and in newsletters, he, his constituents within, wherein he cited the protocols of the elders of Zion claiming that Roosevelt administration was controlled by Jews and objected to Henry Mortagao Jr., whatever it is, a Jew, becoming Secretary of the Treasury. Drew Pearson claims that the Washington Merry Go Round column that in a publication of American Fascists 
silver shirt, McFadden, had been extensively quoted in support of Adolf Hitler. Really? Oh, so they were saying he was a Nazi. <laughs> Do you see what they did? They discredited him, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is their M.O. McFadden embarrassed them on the House floor by introducing that bill, showing exactly what they had done. So what did they do? They went and took his words out of context. Whoever wrote the article decided to put in whatever they wanted. The Washington Mary go round column, okay? And then it said that he, remember, they painted him out to be crazy. You're so crazy. In September, the Nazi tabloid praised McFadden. They knew what they were doing. They didn't care about McFadden. They didn't mind saying he's one of ours. He was also lauded by publications of William Dudley Pillay, whoever that idiot is, leader of the Silver Shirts, on several occasions. Now, I don't know who the Silver Shirts were, so let's find out who these Silver Shirts were. The Silver Legion of America, commonly known as Silver Shirts, was an underground American fascist organization founded by William Dudley Pillay that was headquartered in Asheville, North Carolina and announced publicly on January 30th, 1933, the group was effectively dissolved. Ladies and gentlemen, they were discrediting him. The same as they tried with me, using my pass, thinking that that was going to be enough to stop me from doing what I do, thinking that everybody was going to stop listening because they announced something negative. This is their job. This is what they do. Now remember, I want you all to pay attention. I want you all to pay attention. They announced we intended to act for all political purposes as though McFadden had died. This is probably Harry Reid's father that said this. It's a merry-go-round, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party and all the stupid parties out there because it's one big happy incest party. But notice, they started to condemn him and to denounce him and they read him out of the party, had his committee post taken away from him, all of his posts they took away. He was an excellent congressman up until the point that he put forth that bill. Shame on him. And what happened? Oh, but here's the thing. He was still reelected back to Congress. <laughs> on election day that year, he lost. Oh, well, he ended up losing Dag Nabbit to Charles E. Dyer, Dietrich, by about 2,000 votes. Hold on, this was the only early election, or excuse me, this was the only election between 1912 and 1950 when the district elected a Democrat. Okay, so it was the only election where they elected a Democrat, who cares? According to McFadden's Jewish telephonic agency obituary, in January 1935, he announced his candidacy for president with the backing of an organization called the Independent Republican National Christian Gentile Committee on a platform to keep the Jews out of control of the Republican Party. Not garnering much support for his presidential bid, he tried to win back his congressional seat. He lost nomination by a wide margin to Colonel Albert Rutherford. Hey, he's a colonel? Interesting. Who went on to win the general election for the congressional seat. And that's it. That's all we learned about this young man. But we can see here that they destroyed him. The same as they did traffic him. The same as they will try to do to me and others like me ladies and gentlemen sorry you lay on an operating table temperature of 126 degrees and you get fried and toasted and turned over and flambazled and you know yet you, you just don't scare too easily 
you. And my God has the power of the resurrection. Plus, he has promised another reward for me. So guess what? As long as I do right by my fellow man, as long as I follow my God's rules, my God's regulations, my God's statutes. See, I can't follow my God's statutes and man's statutes when man's statutes conflicts with my God's statute. He doesn't permit that. He has to come first. So as long as I put him first and everybody else second and myself last, I'm all right. I'm not scared. I used to be scared, but then I got my brakes repaired and no longer am I scared. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we just wanted to bring this information to you. Okay. There was an AR people in Congress who are trying to work about change, but they can't. They can't. The reason why they can't work about change is because their lives are threatened. And then all of a sudden they end up dead over some stupid stuff talking about, oh, well, he was walking down the street and he committed suicide. Yeah, he shot himself in the head twice and in the front of the head once. You guys heard the story about the guy who committed suicide shooting himself three times in the head? Impossible, but they said he did it. So, or the guy who drowned in his boat when there was no water in the boat. You, you guys know about that one too, right? Okay, so now that you hear about all the wonderful ways they kill people, and then when you watch shows like uh, Scorpion, and see, I can't stand Scorpion because they have at least one crisis, and this is the way, this is the premise of that stupid show. They'll have a crisis, and then while they're having that crisis, they'll have three more crises, and then they'll do that long delay. And see, I'm glad I watch it on tape because I get to skip through all of that waiting stuff so that you get to wait to see what the outcome is going to be. I get to go right past the point to where they save the person. I get to move on and listen to the rest of the story if I choose to. Okay, well, this is what our society is doing, ladies and gentlemen. Look, you can't change the system. These men who had more power than any of you tried to change the system. They tried to bring about awareness and it didn't work. Why? Because there are certain things that are prophesied to have happened. What is a prophecy? It is a foretelling of events that are to come. Future events, not prior events. Well, the foretelling of events have been just that, a foretelling of events. Now, I did look up this McFadden Act. All right, and look, the unique thing about this McFadden Act, take a look, there's nothing here. Banking regulations of the United States, see, 1933 Banking Act. Okay, so major federal legislation. Okay, so they put the McFadden Act, the 1933 Banking Act. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do that. Let's pull up the McFadden Act. The McFadden Act. Okay, this is PDF. So it's going to allow me to download a PDF, and that's what I need. I need the PDF because I've never seen the McFadden Act. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to suggest that all of you go over the McFadden Act. You see, he wasn't crazy when he introduced this bill, was he? He wasn't stupid when he introduced that bill, was he? He didn't have no blood clot when he introduced that bill, did he? But they want to make you all think that this man didn't know what he was doing. That he was stupid, that he was a moron, that he was ignorant, that he was dumb. Now, we're going to do that. I put Biblia. I didn't put the A, but Biblia. That means one. Anyway. Where are you? Did you pull up already? PDF exchange. This is the, the information on the McFadden Act pulling up now. Uh, okay, McFadden publication. I don't want that. We the people. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would strongly, because I do believe that there is remedy in this act for us. I really believe that. That's why I took the time to pull it up. 
That's why I was getting ready to end the video. Oh, that's right. Can't end the video without Richard. Richard, talk to us. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Dimples Field. All right, an act to further amend the national banking laws and the Federal Reserve Act and for other purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, this act encompasses all the banking laws and the Federal Reserve Act. Like I said, I do believe that there is remedy here. Pay attention. I do believe that there is remedy here. The act entitled, the act to provide for the consolidation of national banking associations approved November 7th, 1918, be amended by adding at the end thereof, a new section that reads as follows. Okay. Now they're incorporating the District of Columbia banks. Now, why is that? Now, that's only one part of it. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only 11 pages. So what I would suggest is you guys download this. Obligations of any person's corporate co-partnership association and or corporation in the form of notes secured by no less than a like amount of bonds and notes of the United States issued since April 24th, 1917 or certificates of indebtedness to the United States shall except to the extent that's permitted by the rules and regulations required by the control of the currency with the approval of the Secretary of the Treasury be subject under this section to a limitation of 15 per centum of such capital and surplus in addition to 10 per centum of such capital and surpluses. I don't know where the remedy is, ladies and gentlemen, because it's my first time seeing a McFadden, 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 McFadden Act, okay? But I'm pointing it to you all's attention okay i am pointing it to i already know there are 66 books of the bible oh it says 66 bible books about god's sovereignty okay no this ain't knowing jesus no that uh, jesus never says he's sovereign sovereignty of god versus what does the bible say about god's sovereignty how does his sovereignty impact me no we're not looking for that junk top seven verses showing god's sovereignty Pantheos! Pantheos! An actual website called Christian named after a Greek pagan god. My bad. I apologize. This ugly woman named Sadie called me up and said she's having my baby. Lord have mercy. No, I, I thought this was actually going to show the verses, so um, no. No, 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 no. Get out of here. I don't read junk like this. This is somebody's opinion. I'm looking for, <sighs> I put Bible verse, and the fact is, these are sites where they put their opinions. I don't read people's opinions, people, especially when it comes to my God. Okay? I don't read people's opinions. Well, we got Isaiah, and Isaiah does speak of the international way because the sovereign Lord helped me. The sovereign Lord. See, that's what I was looking for. Verses that actually use the term sovereign Lord. Now, when Lord is in all caps, it means Jehovah. Okay, watch this, because y'all don't believe me. No, because there are a lot of there are people out there who know this, but there you guys got to understand. Everybody is not you. Okay. Everybody is not you. Everybody doesn't understand what you understand. That's what I have to learn. Every time I do this, every time I do a video. No, we got the that one people say they're biased because they're called Jehovah's Witnesses. So, they, of course, they're going to show Jehovah being the sovereign. Okay, but as I told you, I know my God is sovereign. And the book of Ezekiel. See, the problem is, no, Jeremiah... The Bible hub, but you notice how okay. Other translations do not use Jehovah in this passage. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord Jehovah says. Not for the sake of my acting, O house of Israel, but for my holy name. Okay? 
So again, oh, that's okay. It is still from the Watchtower. Uh, no. But other Bible verses do not put God's name there. The New King James does. Well, it puts the Tetragrammaton, but it still puts the name back. Okay. Uh, nope, that doesn't do it either. Well, yeah, nope, that's not what I'm looking for. No, 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 no. All right, so we can't do that. That's not going to work. But it's the book of Ezekiel. Uh, let's do Ezekiel. How do you spell Ezekiel? There you go. That's how that's how we spell it. Like that. Okay. This is what the sovereign Lord says, okay? And Ezekiel says and they will have to know that I am Jehovah. It's what Ezekiel says continually. The book of Isaiah uses the term Sovereign Lord Jehovah as declares the Sovereign Lord Jehovah and it will surely take place, declares the Sovereign Lord Jehovah. And this, it, uh, this is the day I have spoken. Okay, so it's the fact that Ezekiel says that everyone will have to come to know what his name is. Remember he says, when I deal with you for my name's sake. But he doesn't have a name, his name is Lord. Whatever, ladies and gentlemen. That's the God I serve. So that's why I'm not worried about doing anything to cause someone to do harm to me as long as I do what's right. And I live my life by trying to do right by everybody. Okay? All right. Now that we got the issue of why I call him my sovereign and why I said from the very beginning that there can be no such thing as a sovereign man or woman because you'll be in contrary to him. Okay, we did say that we were going to talk about this, so let's talk about it, okay? We got it open. Coronary thrombosis is a formation of blood clot inside the blood vessels of the heart. This blood clot restricts the blood flow within the heart. It is associating with a narrowing of the blood vessels, the condition. Now, we have this right here. We have this disease, right? Because it is a disease. That's what the ISIS is, okay? And I, was try I wasn't trying to open it in Wikipedia. I was actually trying to open it in Google. So this is Lionel Richie talking about being stuck. Now watch this. Uh, not looking for that. We're looking... I just want to see if it's ever been used in an assassination attempt as a, as a method of assassination. That's all I'm looking for because, um, yeah, see, it, it brought, blocked out assassination, but I guarantee you that it was used as a method of mimicking a heart attack. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Remember. What, what, wait, 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 hold on. Job Trafficant, a person who brought up the exact same thing, died of the very same thing. Okay, I didn't bring up heart. Look at this. Myocardial infraction. A heart attack will cause severe chest pains, heart muscles, and circulation. These medicines are not routinely used early after a coronary thrombosis, but may be used for... Okay, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. How did I know it was associated with a heart attack? I didn't read anything up on it. I'm just learning about it for the first time. Same as you. Because here's what happens. See, myocardial infraction is now the most common cause of death in the UK and other developed countries. Ladies and gentlemen, why is this? It was hardly known before 1910. So they didn't have the 
technology to determine whether or not it was caused by natural causes or caused by an individual interfering with it. How did I know it had something to do with a heart attack? Well, of course, we knew it had something to do with the, it said a blood clot originally, and you heard me speak about a blood clot. So how did I know it had something to do with a heart attack or being something that could be induced from outside forces? The simple fact that John Trafficant died of a heart attack. The only other person to speak on the Florida House about this, John Trafficant, and then before him, some 40, almost 50 years prior, McFadden. Okay? Which lets me know that something was wrong. Because, see, this one doesn't talk about a heart attack. This one talks about only a blood clot. This is Wikipedia. But when you go and you read into the others, this one is called a uh, heart attack, neck doctor. So he died of a heart attack. Okay, just in a nutshell, which is, you know, you've seen all of the movies, ladies and gentlemen, where they fake a heart attack. They make it look like the person died of a natural cause or a natural heart attack. All of the movies do it. When they want to fake somebody's death to make it appear the person died of natural causes, do they not induce a heart attack? So that's what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that this uh, this congressman, this senator, well, he was just a, um, a Republican. That's right. I said he was just a Republican. Ladies and gentlemen, even if I said he was just a Democrat, he was just a man. Okay. Get rid of him. Okay. When they killed this man, and they did kill him, I would love to say they didn't kill him, but this is all the things they put the man through. That's all the stuff they put him through, ladies and gentlemen. Because he sat up there and exposed what they were doing. And you see, he wasn't light about his foot, feet. And because he brought up those charges, he did it as the chairman of the committee. He had every right to do so. He ran the committee. Nobody has ever refuted that. They just decided that they were not going to vote in favor of impeachment. That's all they decided that they weren't going to vote in favor of impeachment. Now it says Time Magazine. No, this is not the article. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. Uh, Louis T. McFadden on Herbert Hoover, The New Republic. No. Uh, don't want that. I want to find uh, the note that references this vote. So let's go here. No. Yeah, let's go. Let's go there and let's see what it pulls up. Mr. Speaker, I raised the question of the constitutional privilege. Really? One afternoon last week, Rep Representative Lewis Thomas McFadden, rambunctious Pennsylvania <laughs> Republican, planted himself in the House well square, his stocky shoulders, spoke these words. Behind him was the Rostrum slouched Speaker Garner. Before him, several hundred members drows through routine legislation. Strident McFadden voice continued. On my responsibility as a member of the House of Representatives, I impeach Herbert Hoover, President of the United States, for high crimes and misdemeanors, and offer the following resolution. Excuse me? How dare you sit up here in 1932 in December before they even introduced the act, March 9th, 1933 act, and before they even introduced all the other junk. Want the full story? Subscribe now. Of course I ain't going to subscribe now. Okay? I don't want the story. I want the speech. Which is exactly what we had heard read earlier today. Why would I want to subscribe to the Times? Nobody reads the Times anymore. You guys know anybody who reads the Times? So in 1932, he sits up there and he, not Trafficant, but McFadden, reads 
before them that he wants to impeach the president, the secretary of the treasury, he's charging them with conspiracy, ladies and gentlemen. The president controls the, at that time, they wouldn't have been the secret service, but he controls the armed forces. He controls the entire government. And here this lonely congressman who is literally standing by himself, okay, standing by himself, of course. Let me say it again. Of course he's going to die. Traffic him. He dies less than 10 years after his speech. Okay? And when he died less than 10 years after his speech. Wait a minute. I said 10 years? Sorry. I got to get back to the death when he died. Because I didn't even know he had died then. No, I think it was 20 years, not 10 years. No get rid of him because that's where the the Still up. no I don't want to read uh, that's when they were trying to remove him from Congress when they were trying to get rid of his tenure his pension this is a good and all of that and that's what they did ladies and gentlemen they took away everything okay 2000 he died 2014 okay so that's whoa 20 years 21 years after he gave the speech, ladies and gentlemen. He died 21 years after he gave the speech. This is a Gadowski of WeAreChange.org, and I just found out someone stop, that I know. Stop. Shut up. 21 years after he gave the speech. Is it 21? Yeah, 21 years after he gave the speech, he dies of a heart attack, saying that his tractor flipped over after telling people on screen that he had to watch what he said, that he had to stay out of the limelight that someone had given him a warning. Ladies and gentlemen, I received the same type of warning twice within the last year. Said that I was doing too much. When I was on vacation, was asked to stop helping people. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but I tried. I try to listen, but I'm deaf in one ear and can't hear out of the other. And there's this little valley. We take straws and we put it between one ear and the other and we have people blow those little, you know, those little things for parties. That's what they do in my ears because it just goes in one ear and out the other. I don't have time for being threatened. The rule is they can only do so much. Well, they can torture you. That's fine. But here's the problem with torture, as I've said before, and I'll say it again. Your body can only suffer so much pain, then it shuts down. Ladies and gentlemen. But they can torture you past that point. Yes, they can. But they can't do more than what the doctors did. I had blood clots in my liver, my heart, my brain. Blood clots in my kidneys. After that operation. They didn't give me any pain relievers. I don't know if any of you know what it feels like to have gone through what I went through and to have blood clots in all of your major organs and not be given any pain reliever, but that was me. When I say I don't know if any of you know what it feels like, we're going to get rid of uh, Patty. I like Patty. I mean, Patty, she my girl and everything, but we're getting ready to shut this video off. So, hey, Patty, you're just going to have to come back another day. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to say is I've been through enough pain. And again, as long as I do what I'm supposed to do, I have trust, faith, and confidence in the God that I serve. So I'm not worried about me. I got people talking about how they're worried about me. Don't worry about me. Do not cry for me, Argentina! Okay, don't worry about me. I'm going to be all right. The unique thing about it is they're having trouble implementing their plan because of people like me. Now, we were better off when you had your Sam Davises and your Jerry Kane, but you see what they did to them. They went after both of them. They went after one man coming at him with guns, harassing him. 
then got released video footage of the police and you see a half a body in the street like it's been photoshopped. Ladies and gentlemen, if the Jerry Kane situation, if they didn't have to photoshop that video, then we would have known that there was something wrong, that they did something to the police. But no, the fact is they photoshopped the video because they didn't want you guys to see what the officers were doing, what the officers was doing to the young man's father. And I know people who know knew Mr. Kane and his son. Like I said, they had a gun and they were supposed to have a gun because it was legal for them to have a gun. But here's the problem. I don't like guns. So I'm not advocating anything. What I'm su just simply suggesting that they didn't get pulled over because they had a gun. They didn't get pulled over for anything. The, the police actually came to the vehicle, asked the father to step to the rear of the police car, not the rear of the first vehicle, but the rear of the police car. Ladies and gentlemen, the police don't do that. Walk you that far away from your vehicle and not keep an eye on the passenger in the car of the car that they stopped. That, that's not police protocol. You guys know what police protocol is. I'm from Los Angeles. I get to see police protocol every time because we used to sit up there and watch them do their routine. They thought we were being nosy, <laughs> idiots. We were sitting up there studying how you guys operate. Okay, you, what you saw with Rodney King happened all the time, people. That wasn't a first-time occurrence. It wasn't a first-time occurrence. So in Los Angeles, many of us are trained to pay attention. The spook that sat by the door. Go back and watch it when you get a chance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we just wanted to bring this information about this law, the McFadden Act, Please go back, take a look at it. You saw how um, Wicked, Wikipedia talked about the related laws regarding the McFadden Act. So look it up in Wikipedia and see the related banking acts associated with the McFadden Act. Everything is about the March 9, 1933 Act. The March 9, 1933 Act is what gave them their power. The March 9, 1933 Act is not so important as the notes associated with the March 9, 1933 Act. Okay, give me a second. Let me show it to you again because some of y'all don't, don't understand. Okay, Senate Report 93-549, where they say at the very beginning of the report that they gave extraordinary authority to the President of the United States. Where is it at? Come on, it's the very, very first paragraph. Where you at? Come on now. Uh-oh. 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 Okay. Let's see. Went too far because it didn't show me nothing. It was showing me a blank screen. If it was showing y'all words, then I apologize because it definitely wasn't showing me nothing. Sit up here and want to shoot it. Kill it. Mm, mutilate it. Give me a second. Trying to find it, y'all. And we put this stuff. I had people find this for you guys so that we could put it up there for you. Let's, so I can't make it smaller. I'm trying to get to the first paragraph. Wait, hold on. We do it this way. <sighs> okay, we're looking for this right here. This is the actual Senate report. Since March 9, 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. In fact, there are now in effect... Four presidentially proclaimed states of national emergency in addition to the nationally, national emergency declared by President Roosevelt in 1933. There are also the national emergency proclaimed by President Truman. And that's the Korean conflict. You know, the conflict that they invented that did not exist. And the states of national emergencies declared by President Nixon. Okay, Vietnam conflict, peoples. All right. These proclamations give forth the 470 provisions of federal law. Now, because these happened in 1970 and the original one happened in 1933, most of those provisional laws, provisions of law happened prior to 1970. These hundreds of statutes delegate to the president. Congress cannot delegate to the president any of its authority. 
extraordinary, see, beyond the ordinary, powers, ordinarily exercised by Congress. See, they delegated the powers ordinarily exercised by them, which means they had the delegation of authority, but they never had the delegation of authority to delegate it to the president, which affect the lives of American citizens in a host of all encompassing manners. This vast range of powers taken together confer enough authority, conferred their authority, to rule the country without reference to normal constitutional processes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what your focus is. Challenge it as unconstitutional. Why? Because Congress says it's unconstitutional. I didn't say this. I didn't make this up. Congress said that. Congress said that we delegated our authority and power to the president. We didn't have the right to do that. Under the powers delegated by these statutes, the president may seize property, organize and control the means of production, seize commodities, assign military forces abroad, institute martial law, seize and control transportation. Agenda 21. Anybody? This is what's going on. And because you guys are talking about everything else, and you really are, you're talking about everything else, you're thinking all these other laws and stuff they created over the past 20 years, including the Patriot Act, has anything to do with it. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to, when you're cutting down a tree, and if it's a big, huge redwood towering 185,000 feet, well, you got to climb that tree and you chop off part of the top, then you chop off part of the top, then you chop off part of the top until you get to the middle and then you chop off the bottom. But if you're chopping down just a tree for firewood for your house, you start at the bottom. You don't go up to the top of that tree. It'll be a waste of your time. You won't accomplish anything. You need to take it out of the foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a tall tree. There are only a couple of banking acts out there. But this, the March 9, 1933 Act, is the act that changed it all. That took away, hold on, hold on, hold, hold on. That took away the Constitution. That suspended the Constitution. I didn't say it. Congress said it. It says gave enough authority to rule this country. Well, no, none of the executive branches rule this country. As a matter of fact, none of the branches of government, even if you combine them, rule this country. This country doesn't have rulers. It has three branches of government that operate independently of each other. That's why it's called separation of powers. They're not allowed to join together for just that purpose, because the country was supposed to be without such a rulership. Don't take my word for it. Go back and look at the reasons for the formation of this stupid government. All right, you have this one, and then you have this one. Senate Doc 43, Money Banking History, Senate 43rd PDF, okay? This is it. So all you got to do is go read this. This talks about, wait, hold on. Let's show... The ultimate ownership of all property is in the state. Individual so-called ownership is only by virtual government, i.e. law, amounting to mere user, and must be in accordance with the law and subordinate to the necessities of the state. In fact, the citizens at a given time may prefer species of currency or vice versa, cannot prevent Congress from enacting those laws which it deems necessary for the maintenance of a proper monetary system. If the laws make species and currency equivalent for the purposes of payment, a failure to pay a given sum in species according to the contract cannot possibly beget an obligation to pay a greater sum in legal tender notes. Whatever premium man may choose to buy for gold when forced to obtain it for a specific purpose and when impelled by the spirit of speculation or by a distrust of government. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the law, and watch this. Hold on, we do it this way. And I done turned off our music, didn't I? I done turned off our music. Y'all better be fortunate that I stumbled onto something else. Because this is, I told you, I do the research with you, even though we read over this before. Uh-uh. We're going to pull this up now. 
Why are we pulling this up? Because I need you guys to go and read. Nope, this is not the one. This is Welch. It can't be. Is it an Arkansas case? I guess it is. I guess it is. What I would suggest, ladies and gentlemen, because I am tired, now I'm about to go lay down because I've been doing this, ooh, doggy, since about 8 o'clock this morning, and we're not going to be able to pull it up anyway. What I would suggest y'all do is when y'all get the chance, go pull up Brown versus Welch and take a look at it because that's where you're going to see that you don't own any property. Remember, that's where I just, hold on now, come on now. That's where I pulled it from. This is where it talks about species. In other words, I show you guys all of this to back up what I'm saying so that when I tell you something, you don't get to contradict me. Because everything I say, I can prove. Well, everything I say, I can prove too. No, everything I say, I can prove with foundation. Everything you say, you can prove only with speculation. So you pull up stuff from the present day. I pull up stuff from the original from where it began. So miss me with that, crack addict. All right, have a good day, everybody. Have a good night, have a good life, have a good time, have a good whatever it is. Make it, make it, make it good. Goodbye.